indeed filling the universe with his glory. But this is, this is the first time that the angels observe directly in heaven deity and humanity joined together in one person forever. They must have been absolutely astounded when they saw Christ arrive. And to think that he is going to be a man forever, having assumed a human nature in Bethlehem, which continues throughout all the generations, surely must have evoked their wonder and their worship. Well, what I'd like to do today is to give you three different rites that the ascension of Jesus Christ proved for the Lord. What are those? First of all, the ascension proved his right of ownership, his right of ownership. Actually, I need to tell you, he owns heaven. When Christ ascended into heaven, there was no mediator there to open the door for him. When Christ ascended into heaven, it was not because he was granted special mercy that he might be able to enter. When Jesus ascended into heaven, he was coming home because he had come from heaven. And he said, O Father, glorify thou me with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. This was the entrance of a man who came to the heaven that he had created of all things. As it says in the book of Colossians, For by him were all things created, both which are in heaven and which are on earth. The Creator was coming back to a place which he had created. Scientists tell us that the universe is infinite. I can't argue with them. I don't know whether it is or not. But this much I do know is that Jesus is more infinite than the universe if you can think of it that way, because I don't believe that God would have ever created a universe that was as great as he himself is. And here he is now localized in a body, coming back to his creation, to that special place where the glory of God shines more brightly. He was coming back as creator, but he was also coming back now as savior. You see, he had finished the work which the Father had given him to do. And it says in the book of Hebrews, having purged our sins, he sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. His work on earth was done. And the scripture tells us that we should look to Jesus, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is now set down on the right hand of the throne of the majesty on high. He had a right to enter into heaven as creator, as God. Now he enters into heaven also as savior. He had a natural right because of his deity, but now he has an earned right because of his humanity and the fulfillment of the will of God for his life. No wonder, no wonder the angels must have been astounded as they saw him come in. And they must have fallen on their face and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, for the whole earth is filled with his glory. He ascended into heaven because he owns heaven and owns the universe. It was a mark of ownership. Secondly, the ascension also was a mark of headship, a mark of headship. You see, when Jesus ascended into heaven, he became the head of his church. Turn to the book of Ephesians chapter 1, where we can see this most clearly. Ephesians chapter 1, where Paul is speaking about Christ at the right hand of God the Father, and he says in verse 20, Talking about the strength which we have, he says, which he brought about in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. Paul did not want to leave any stone unturned. He didn't want to leave out any possibility that this could be misinterpreted. 
that he has dominion over every name and not only in this world but also in the one to come and he has put all things in subjection under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church. Isn't this exciting? Oh, my friend, today, isn't it exciting indeed that we serve a risen Savior? Not just risen, but totally triumphant. This is Pastor Lutzer, and I conclude today with asking you to visualize your problem, your need, and then seeing Jesus as above it. He is seated in the heavens. Everything is under his feet. Your finances, your marriage, your relationship, If you trust him and believe him, he will not only be with you, but he'll help you through whatever it is that you're going through. Trust him today. Dr. Erwin Lutzer with part one of An Extraordinary Ascension, the seventh message in his series, Christ Among Other Gods. Monday, more on why the ascension was crucial to the founding of the church. Running to Win comes to you from the Moody Church in Chicago. The more we learn about Christ, the more brightly he shines. We believe Dr. Lutzer's current series sheds needed light on our understanding of Jesus. Erwin Lutzer's book, Christ Among Other Gods, will be sent as our thank you when you give a gift of any amount to support Running to Win. Just call us at 1-800-215-5001. That's 1-800-215-5001. Online, go to OfferRTW.com. That's OfferRTW, all one word, dot com. Or write to us at Box 11174, Chicago, Illinois, 60611. Join us Monday for our next Running to Win.